Hello, my name is Bob and welcome to another episode of the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. This episode is going to be about measuring or adjusting the valve clearances in the 16 valve air-cooled four-cylinder motors that Suzuki fitted to a range of motorbikes in the first half of the 1980s. I will be demonstrating how to do this on an 1100 uh, but the, the method, not necessarily the valve clearances, but the method works across all of that series of motors. So I hope you enjoy. The air-cooled 16-valve four-cylinder motors were fitted to GS, GSX series bikes from about 1980 to 1985 or so. The engines falling into this category range in size from 750 to 1150cc and this chart details the valve clearances for each engine size. The clearances are the same for the inlet and exhaust valves but they differ slightly between engine sizes. From the chart you should see that for the 1100 I am going to use in this demonstration the inlet and exhaust clearances are 0.07 to 0.12mm or three to five thousandths of an inch. Clearances should be measured when the motor is cold. How cold, you may ask? Preferably after standing overnight. But if you're running a bike shop and the customer wants his bike back to go home on, cool enough to touch without discomfort is probably where it gets done. The valves in these motors are opened by a cam lobe depressing a forked rocker arm. The forked rocker arm has two fork ends which in turn depress the two valves, be they inlet or exhaust, for each cylinder. In turn, the valve springs act to close the open valves when the cam lobe is no longer forcing the follower down. I'm hoping that the diagram shown here will give you a better idea of how it works. The two fork ends of each rocker arm contain a screw adjuster, the bottom of which contacts the top of the valve stem to open the valve. The valve clearance is the gap between the bottom of the screw adjuster and the top of the valve stem as seen in this diagram. I've seen it done, so don't let it happen to you, but the clearance is not the gap between the cam surface and the rocker arm. Valve clearances are measured when the heel of the cam is on the rocker arm, not when it is being depressed by the cam lobe. To remove the valve cover, you first need to remove any fairing uh, pieces and the fuel tank to allow access. Here I'm also removing the horn leaving the wires attached and folding it up out of the way. Some models will have two horns, so you just do that on each side. I've followed it by the spark plug leads and off camera will remove the vent tube from the back of the valve cover and the valve cover itself. Valve covers differ across the models. On some models you may need to remove the tachometer cable as well. There will be a number of bolts and screws holding the cover down and you need to know where each one goes. This valve cover is sealed with silicon RTV and I have flattened and sharpened the end of a piece of 15mm diameter copper pipe to use as a scraper. The copper won't mark or gouge the aluminium alloy like steel would, so it is well suited to the task. Here I'm cleaning the silicon off the valve cover. I also removed the silicon from the cylinder head's mating surface using the same tool, but this time I have the shop vac going to suck up any loose fragments before they can fall into the motor. I'm especially careful around the top of the cam chain tunnel 
And once this is done, I inspect the top of the head for any miss fragments and will pick them out with tweezers. Next we remove the timing cover so we can adjust the position of the crankshaft. The crankshaft through the cam chain adjusts the positions of the camshafts and the valve clearances are measured with the valves closed and fortunately for us there are two crank positions which will allow us to check the clearances of all 16 valves. The two crank positions are piston number one at top dead center and piston number four at top dead center. In this diagram uh, we have piston number one at top dead center and we can check the clearances on the inlet valves of cylinders one and three and the exhaust valves on cylinders one and two. In the diagram the valve clearances to be checked are represented by the dark circles. This next diagram is for the number four piston at top dead center and here the clearances on the inlet valves of cylinders two and four and the exhaust valves on cylinders three and four can be checked. Once again, the valve clearances to be checked are represented by dark circles. Here we are using a 19 millimeter spanner to turn the crank nut and thus the crank clockwise until the T mark on the advance unit lines up with the timing mark. Don't confuse the T mark with the nearby mark for the ignition. Each cam has a notch in the same end as the timing side of the motor. In this position both notches should be in line with the cylinder head's mating surface for the valve cover. When the notches both point out, piston 1 is at top dead centre and when the notches both point in, piston 4 is at top dead centre. With the crank in position, proceed to check the clearances of the relevant valves. For this motor, the clearances are 0.07 to 0.12 millimetres, and I'm using a feeler or thickness gauge to check this clearance. I have one feeler gauge at 0.07 millimetres, but none at 0.12 millimetres, so I've matched up two leaves to give this value. If the clearance is within limits, the smaller thickness gauge should be an easy sliding fit between the bottom of the screw adjuster and the top of the valve stem, whilst the thicker one should not slide in. Be careful, however, as it is easy to force a feeler gauge into the gap, so let an easy sliding fit be your guide. Here I am adjusting the clearance on a valve. To do this, I am lo loosening the lock nut with a 9mm ring spanner, and adjusting the screw adjuster position with a square socket special tool. This is actually a Honda special tool but it also works fine on a Suzuki. But if you don't have one, don't worry, a small shifting spanner suitably adjusted will also work. Only a partial turn of the adjuster is usually needed. Once this is done, retighten the lock nut and check the clearance on both valves for that rocker arm again as the movement of one can affect the clearance of the other. With the clearances all done for the number one piston at top dead centre, I then rotate the crank through 360 degrees, that is one full rotation, and check the remaining clearances. I no longer fit gaskets to these valve covers, instead I use silicon RTV to seal the cover. I apply about a 3mm bead of silicon all around the cylinder head's mating surface for the valve cover, and then I drop the valve cover on top of it. Here I'm putting the screws and bolts back into the valve cover. I give the threads of each bolt or screw a wipe with an oily rag before installing 
and also coat the underside of the metal washers of the four special Phillips head screws with silicon RTV having done away with the need for the original rubber sealing washers. On the bench below the bike you'll notice I have a board with all the valve cover bolts and screws laid out in holes corresponding to the position where they go on the head. If you do this a lot this is a useful tool to have as it ensures that each bolt or screw is always in its right position. The trick I use with the silicon gasket maker is to snug up but not tighten the screws and bolts for the cover initially. I then usually leave it overnight for the silicon to cure and then tighten up the screws and bolts in the morning. The valve covers and all but the last models are prone to leaking oil but I find my method is pretty effective in stopping this. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. And if you did like the video, then I welcome a thumbs up. And please share it amongst your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, think about subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to ding the bell down below so that you're reminded every time a new video from the White Dog Garage YouTube channel comes out. If you don't want to subscribe, I'm fine with that. I'm not looking to build a big channel here. However, um, if you want to check back every second Friday, uh, hopefully we'll have a new video posted. They won't all be about motorcycles. I have a diverse range of interests, so stay tuned. Everyone's a surprise, sometimes for me as well. Thank you, and see you next time.